All right, hey guys, we're gonna do the limit comparison test and the comparison test today. So <clears throat> the limit comparison test is gonna be a really big deal. Here's the idea. I want you to think about when you add up one over two to the K, the individual terms, one half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, are getting small so fast that even adding infinitely many of them up together give you a finite number. That's what convergence means. One over K, one plus a half plus a third plus a quarter, they're going to zero, but so slowly that as you add them up, they never quite, the sum never settles down. So it's, you're measuring how fast the individual terms go to zero. Okay, so the idea is here, if you look at one over k squared and one over k squared plus one, those are going to zero at about the same speed. So since one over the sum of one over k squared converges, you're going to expect the sum of 1 over k squared plus 1 converges, okay? So the limit comparison test turns that intuition into a practical tool. So here's the limit comparison test. It says if you've got two sequences, A and B, <clears throat> all the terms are positive. Um, and if you take the ratio of the terms, each for each k, take AK over BK, and watch what happens to that ratio as k goes to infinity, it converges to something other than zero. In practice, this will always be one, so that sounds more confusing than it is. But as long as their ratio converges to something other than zero, then they either both converge or they both diverge. They do the same thing, okay? So they're, they're, they're buddies. Um, so, Here's how to turn that into, into a recipe. So if somebody hands you a series, we're gonna call your series sigma AK. Um, the first thing to do is to find your BK, and that's gonna be a simplified series. You're gonna write out AK, throw away the lower order terms the way we've been doing all along on the top and bottom, and then simplify it until it looks like one of the series you know. What are the series we know? We know P-series, we know geometric series. Maybe there'll be another one or two in there. So that's the first step, and that's the fundamental one. Second, you take that simple series, P-series, geometric series, and you decide whether it converges using the P-series test or the geometric series test. That's easy. The third step is a kind of eat your vegetables step you have to check that this really works. So to check you've picked a good BK and that it satisfies the assumptions of the theorem, you have to write out AK over BK, take the limit as K goes to infinity. This will look scary, but not be that bad. What you will find is if you did a good job, the limit will be one and you're like, okay then, now whatever my simplified series does, that's what my original series does. That's pretty complicated. I'm gonna show it to you in an example, okay? So here's my first series. Sum k equals one to infinity k plus one over k squared plus ln k. Really complicated series. It's obviously not geometric series, p series, anything like that. Step one, I'm gonna take the sequence of terms k plus one over k squared plus ln of k. We're gonna throw away low order terms. So one is goes to infinity slower than k, ln of k goes slower than k squared, so this behaves like k over k squared, which is one over k. Okay, so complicated series turns into a simple series. One over k is not just a simple series, it's one we know. It's a p series, right, with p equals one. So sigma one over k is a p series with p equals one, Something you want to get really comfortable with by practicing, if necessary, is recognize P in geometric series and then recognize what the series does. P equals 1 diverges. That's the harmonic series. Okay, now comes the vegetable eating step. So you write out a big fraction, limit out in front. On the top, you put your original... Uh, terms of your series, which usually 
is itself a fraction, k plus 1 over k squared plus ln of k. On the bottom, you put your simplified, the terms of your simplified series. That looks like a huge mess, but the first step always makes it simpler. So remember, when you divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying it by its reciprocal, right? You divide by the divide by k, it's the same as multiplying by k. It's like the brother of your brother is yourself. So the first step is you bring this 1 over k, you bring the k up to the top, you bring the stuff that's in the fraction to the bottom, and you're left with k times the original numerator over the original denominator. Not too bad. Now you have to do a little algebra to make the top and bottom be a sum of terms. And as always, you throw away the lower order terms. And now you get k squared over k squared, which is 1. So that means we did a good job. And that means that whatever the simplified series does, remember we saw the simplified series diverges, that's what the original series does. So the original series diverges. Okay, let's do that again, because that's complicated. Now we're going to look at sum from k equals 1 to infinity, k squared plus 2 to the k over k minus 5 times 3 to the k. So first step, get rid of lower order stuff. 2 to the k beats k squared. 3 to the k beats k. So we're left with 2 to the k over minus 5 times 3 to the k, and it is okay to leave it like that, but if you want to recognize it as what kind of series it is, you might want to take out that minus 5. It's in the denominator, so we're going to write it as minus 1 fifth. And then 2 to the k divided by 3 to the k is the same as 2 thirds to the k by rules of exponents. Okay, That's a geometric series. What's more, it's a geometric series with r equals 2 thirds So it converges. Okay. Now we eat our vegetables. On the top, we have the original series written as a fraction. On the bottom, we have the simplified series written as a fraction. And now we just bring everything to the right place. The denominator of the denominator, there's a minus 5, and there's a 3 to the k. In the numerator of the denominator, there's a 2 to the k, and then we bring all this stuff down. Okay, First step, get used to it, and it simplifies everything a good bit. Now you kind of multiply things out. 3 to the k times k squared is k squared times 3 to the k. 3 to the k times 2 to the k is 6 to the k. 2 to the k times k is k 2 to the k. 2 to the k times minus 5 3 to the k is minus 5, 6 to the k. Okay, Now, throw away lower order terms. 6 to the k beats anything times 3 to the k. 6 to the k beats anything times 2 to the k. And we are left with minus 5, 6 to the k over minus 5, 6 to the k, which is 1. Okay, So the limit comparison test works. What does that mean? That means that the behavior of this crazy thing is the same as the behavior of our simplified series. Remember, it was a geometric series with r equals 2 thirds, so it converged. One last example. <clears throat> Square root of n over n squared plus 1. I'm going to do this one a little quicker. Square root of n over n squared plus 1. Throw away lower order terms. We get Square root of n over n squared. That's n to the 1 half over n squared. Rules of exponents, you subtract 1 over n to the 3 halves. P series with p equals 3 halves. So the my Siri just wanted me to talk to it. So <clears throat> by the um, uh, p series test, this series converges. Now we check. Complicated mess on the top. Simplified series on the bottom. Flip it over. n to the 3 halves goes up top n squared plus 1 goes to the bottom. When we multiply this out, remember you bring it in the square root, n to the 3 halves becomes n cubed. So this is n to the 4th plus, that's a mistake, that should be n cubed. 
n to the fourth plus n cubed behaves when n is large like n to the fourth n squared plus one behaves like n squared take the square root and you are done you got one so lct says the series converges okay mostly we will use the limit comparison test but i want you to see and practice a little bit the comparison test here's a great analogy i'm very proud of this comparison test is to limit comparison test as stick shift is to automatic okay it does everything automatic does if you're really good at it in the hands of an expert it does things a little bit better and it does a little bit more um and and let's be honest it's a lot cooler but if you're not an expert then you just end up looking like a dork so um the comparison test we will will be very challenging you will not become an expert but i want you to see how it works and begin to get comfortable with it here's the statement a little hard to follow if you have two series positive terms as before and this time every term of a is smaller than every term of b it really is good enough if it's less than or equal to um then if the big series converges the little series converges if the little series diverges the big series also diverges but it doesn't go the other way okay little series converges doesn't tell us anything so that only there's only thing you can get out of it is when you see how to use it as a tool so if you're looking at a series and you don't know if it converges all the terms are positive then if you can somehow dream up a bigger series bk every term is bigger that converges then you know your series converges and if you can somehow dream up a smaller series that diverges then your series diverges so there's two things that you have to be tricky about you have to be able to change it into something that's smaller or bigger and the thing new thing has to diverge or converge and it has to go in the right direction that's what's hard but i'm going to help you so here's an example ln of k over k um notice we can't use limit comparison test because none of the nothing simplifies it's already simple you can't use the divergence test because the um, bottom goes to infinity faster than the top which means the whole th each term goes to zero divergence test tells you nothing so so far we don't know anything that helps with that um so the limit comparison test we know the i'm sorry the comparison test we know that ln of k goes to infinity slowly when we divide by k it goes to infinity faster but not very fast one over k doesn't go to infinity very fast so this this is going to be kind of similar to one over k which diverges so you say well can i compare it to one over k um well ln of k is usually greater than one well as long as k is at least three right because the natural log of e is one after that it gets bigger so except for the first couple of values ln of k is bigger than one so ln of k over k is bigger than one over k remember you don't care about the first few values so this is the other tricky thing but the powerful thing about the comparison tool you only need the bigger series or the smaller series to be bigger or smaller after the first few terms um so in this case the sequence one over k is smaller than the sequence ln of k over k and since the series the sum of one over k diverges that's the right direction so that i the comparison test tells you that ln of k over k diverges here's another direction let's look at one over k factorial again it's already simplified can't use lct goes to zero can't use dt um but we know that k factorial increases really rapidly one over k factorial goes to zero super fast faster than any exponential that makes us think that it is going to converge 
we want to compare it to something bigger that converges. Um, so let's compare it to 2 to the k. So notice k factorial is bigger than 2 to the k. Well, that's not quite true. If you look at the first few, it doesn't work out. But 4 factorial is bigger than 2 to the 4th. 5 factorial is bigger than 2 to the 5th. And the factorial is getting bigger faster. So after that, k factorial is bigger than 2 to the k. For k greater than or equal to 4, that means 1 over k factorial is less than 1 over 2 to the k. 1 over 2 to the k is a geometric series with r equals 1 half. So it converges by the geometric series test, which means that by the comparison test, 1 over k factorial, which is even smaller, converges. Okay, I will see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.